What's going on YouTube? So while a lot of compact crossovers can be one size fits all, the 2024 Kia Sportage is quite different. That's right, the Sportage is not only bold in design, it also boasts a lot of standard features as well as value. So what's new for the 2024 model year? That's what we're about to find out. Now, like always, let's start out under the hood for our spec dump. So what is under the hood has not changed for 2024. You'll continue to find on most versions a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. It's making 182 horsepower, 178 pound feet of torque. Uh, there does continue to also be hybrid and plug-in hybrid variants available as well. You have an eight speed automatic transmission, front wheel drive or optional all wheel drive. The fuel economy is gonna be 25 miles a gallon combined with this base engine and all wheel drive. Now, of course, we're gonna go out on a test drive later on in this video, get things like our signature sound level reading so that we can compare this Sportage to all its competitors in the class on carconfections.com. But first, let's close up the hood and take a look at this very distinct exterior and our 2024 changes. Now, Mason mentioned in the intro that the Sportage is a model that really stands out, and that begins up here in the front. It has a very distinct look to it. This is using the brand's newest Opposites United design language, and part of that is going to be a large and bold front-end design. So you'll notice you kind of have that typical tiger nose shape, but with a uh, you know kind of wider look to it. It's going to be full gloss black finish through here, and you continue to have a lot of different trim levels you can choose between on this model. You have the X-Line and X-Pro trim levels. Those are going to give it a little bit more of a rugged look. Today we have the X-Line, and as you can see, this lower bumper is going to be finished in a little bit more of a rugged design. But now let's get into the exciting update for 2024, and that's going to involve our lighting. You might be noticing, even though this is not the top-end trim level, we have a very premium LED light cluster. Uh, Kia has actually made projector LEDs now standard across the entire Sportage lineup for 2024. With that is also going to come the premium LED daytime running light and turn signal indicators through here. We have an amber accent that runs through here. And then you continue to have the large daytime running light coming down the front of the vehicle. If you choose a higher end example, you will also have LED fog lamps down below. And all wheel drive models will have 8.3 inches of ground clearance. Now as you move around to the back design, you're going to see a uh, rear look that I think is very heavily influenced by the Kia EV6 model. Yeah, it's kind of blown up for Sportage Judy. Now as far as the main design element, that's going to be your taillight. So I'm going to have Drew go ahead and hop inside. We're going to see if all the elements of this taillight are LED. So we do have an incandescent brake light, incandescent uh, turn signal indicator. We have an LED reverse light integrated down here though. Um, and I also wanna point out that you do have LED accenting. The LED accenting is standard on all the models, but if you want all of the elements, including the brake light and turn signal to be LED, you're gonna have to choose a prestige trim level. Now dropping down to this lower area, since we do have the X-Line model, this is all gonna be finished in a rugged matte black plastic. You can also get different finishes if you don't like the way this looks. 2,500 pounds is your max tow rating for the Sportage model. Now, another part of the stylish design, of course, are your wheel options. You've got a lot of different choices. You have 17, 18, and 19 inch alloy options. Um, what you're looking at right here are probably my favorite design, actually. These are the 19 inch contrast alloy wheels on the X-Line model. I do also want to mention, since we're talking about trim levels, uh, that the SX with all-wheel drive is no longer available for 2024. You can still get it with front-wheel drive, just not with all-wheel drive. As we move up here to the mirrors, you are going to have heating and blind spot monitoring starting on the EX trim level. If you choose uh, any of your X trims, those are going to give you the gloss black finish up top. 
Now here at the side, we're looking at an overall length of 183 and a half inches long, which is actually longer than most of its main competition, like the Toyota RAV4. Now, as far as design elements, we have the raised roof rails for this X-Line model. I do also want to point out you can get a two-tone roof option on the Sportage, just depending on your trim level configuration. We also have the rugged matte black uh, wheel surrounds. You can also get those gloss black on the higher end trim levels. Now let's go ahead and talk about your safety systems for this 2024 Sportage. Now there is a new safety feature and that's going to be rear seat mounted airbags. That's going to be standard on all of the trim levels this year. And as far as the safety systems, you are going to have three out of your four active safety features as standard equipment on all Sportage models. Additionally, if you go for an SX or X Pro trim level, that will throw in your adaptive cruise control with highway drive assist. And furthermore, if you choose a prestige trim level, that will also throw in rear auto braking. But guys, that's going to be where we leave off on the exterior design of this Kia Sportage. And if you're new here, we're brothers, and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. All right, now on to the interior. So the strong value proposition actually begins before we even get inside because we have smart entry with remote start being included on all but the very base LX model. You have that detonator shaped key fob. And of course, to get inside, there's not a sensor behind the handle, so you just press the black button. That will unlock the door. Now taking a look inside the cabin, we obviously have the latest Kia design language since this is still a very new model. And let's kick things off here by talking color and material choices. So the base LX will come with cloth seating. However, all the rest of the trim levels will come with a premium leatherette trim. If you choose the X line or the X pros, you're gonna have this quilted design that you see on uh, today's model. Looks really nice, feels pretty premium as well. We've got the choice between black or sage green. You can get some additional colors if you choose one of the other trim levels, such as red. Now, as far as the seats themselves, they are 10-way power adjusting with two-way lumbar support on all but the LX. And if you want memory seating, you'll have to choose at least the SX trim level. But let's go ahead and climb inside, look at the rest of the details. Now that we're inside, let's look at the rest of the cabin materials. Starting with our door trim, we have a nice leatherette material across here as well as the center section. It's going to be soft touch along the top. And that soft touch material is going to continue up here on the upper dash. Um, as you can see, it does have a stitching detail through there. We have some piano black accents around the vent. And then this right here is something I really like. We have a very realistic faux wood trim. This is gonna be exclusive to just the X trim levels in the lineup. As we move down to the center, this part here is going to be hard touch, but feels nice and solid. And then we have a piano black accent around the shifter. Now the push button start is gonna be located in front of the shifter. This will be included EX and above. Now, like always, this is the point I want to transition into a first-person perspective so we can really see the details up close and personal. First off, of course, we have our gauge cluster. So this is kind of a unique setup. We have this dual display curved arrangement. Um, it's going to be a 12.3-inch display on both sections on your higher-end examples. The LX, EX, and X line, though, if you look closely, we actually have a 4.2 inch multifunction display and then we have digital numbering. So it still has the look of a curved display, but this is a slightly less premium than your upper end models. That being said, you can still, of course, customize the information in there. Um, and the uh, blind spot camera system is also going to be available on the prestige trim levels. Now, as we pull back to the steering wheel, typical Kia design, nicely leather wrapped and all with the base model. We do have manual tilt and telescoping. Heating is also available on most trim levels. And I'm surprised to find even on this mid-level X line, we have rain sensing wipers. But let's go ahead and get into interior storage because this is an area that this next gen Sportage has really impressed me. First off, we have a really large center console, nice felt lining inside of it. But this area here is what really impresses me. A very versatile space. You can stick an iPad sideways if you need to. And when it's time to uh, use the cup holders, you just press those buttons and then that allows you to have your cups in place. You also have another large storage area up here in the front and this doubles as a wireless phone charging pad. 
Now, as we come back to the uh, shifter, we have the traditional T shifter. Um, if you have the hybrid models, that's going to be replaced by an electronic shifter. Pulling back for drive, of course, bumping to the left if you want to shift manually. And when we go into reverse, you're going to be greeted with this traditional backup camera. Um, we do have active trajectory on board. We also have rear parking sensors here on the X line. Of course, your upper end models, um, the prestige models to be specific, are going to have the 360 degree camera system. And then you have an electronic parking brake located on the left side of the steering wheel. Now back behind the shifter, you have some controls for various functions, including our drive mode controller. And then off to the right side of that, we have our three-stage heated seats. These are included on all but the base model. Seat ventilation is offered, but you have to choose the top end prestige. And then let's come up here to our climate controls. So this is a, an area that's pretty unique to the uh, Kia lineup. We have the multifunction climate and audio controls. So right now we're in the climate adjustment. So we can adjust the dual zone automatic climate with these knobs up and down like so. The magic happens when I press that button, it turns into your audio control. So this is now a volume knob. Now, as far as your audio systems, six speaker sound system will be on LX, EX, and X line. All the rest of the trims will come with the premium eight speaker Harman Kardon sound system. Since this is the mid-level X line, let's test out that standard system. Yeah, so overall sound quality, not bad at all. But of course, if you really enjoy audio, then you know upgrade to one of the trim levels that will give you the Harman Kardon. All right, so let's talk about the displays. Um, we have pretty impressive equipment on board when it comes to the displays because everything except for the LX trim level will come with the 12.3 inch display you see here today. That LX will come with an eight inch display instead. That's important because it also has slightly different functionality. So if you have the LX with the eight inch display, you'll have wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. All the models with the 12.3 inch display will have to connect via a USB to have access to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. That being said, these models will come with built-in navigation located right there. Moving beyond that, we've got a manual dimming mirror here on the X line. We do, however, have the panoramic sunroof. This is going to be part of our model's premium package, although this is also thrown in as standard equipment on the S-Line and X-Pro and above. And sitting in the rear seat of this Kia Sportage is always very nice because you have a ton of space and also way more features than you would expect at this price point. We're sitting at 41.3 inches of legroom, 39.4 inches of headroom, these are really incredible space figures. It's really bigger than the vast majority of the competition. The CRV might be your only exception to that as uh, bigger than this. Now, as far as knee space be to behind Drew's sitting position, he's 5'8", I'm 5'9". We're sitting at about nine inches of space, which is very good. Also, my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat and my uh, seat backs can recline really good ways, guys. I'm very, very comfortable in the rear seat area. Now, as far as in feature wise, we do have vents here in the middle. We're also going to have USB ports. This is the uh, type C variety integrated into both seat backs. Dropping down below that, we have a little storage cubby. Do be aware though, no heated rear seats on the Kia Sportage, regardless of trim level. Um, the Hyundai Tucson does offer that, but not on this model. Additionally, we have the coat hook uh, headrest. So if you want to hang stuff up in the rear seat, you can do that. We have fold down center armrests with cup holders inside. And then right here, you will notice the uh, little tag for the new airbag for 2024 that's seat mounted. And then turning to your door trim, uh, the top part is going to be made of a hard touch plastic. Um, so that's a little different from the front, but it's still overall very nice. We have some more of that faux wood, leather on the armrest portion and bottle storage down in the very bottom. Now walking up to the tailgate, 
you'll hear it start to beep, and that's because we have the smart power tailgate on this X-Line. It is included as optional equipment on this trim level. Uh, it's standard on the higher end versions, but do keep in mind if you really want the power tailgate, you can get it on pretty much all the trim levels as an option package. Now, let's talk about the space in this uh, cargo area because this is an incredibly, incredibly uh, impressive part about this Sportage. 39.6 cubic feet of cargo capacity behind the second row seats. If we fold those seats down with these nice integrated levers right here, we're sitting at 74 cubic feet as a maximum cargo capacity. Now, as far as how that compares to the competition, that is going to be larger than Toyota RAV4. It's going to be larger than pretty much everything else in the segment besides the Honda CRV, which it pretty much ties in terms of overall cargo capacity. So very impressive. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, tape measure out because at Car Confections, we like to give you all the details and the facts and figures. And we're sitting at about 74 inches of space behind the driver's seat, which does indeed mean that you're going to be able to fit an adult bicycle in terms of length back here. And then as far as the width, we're sitting at a very impressive about 54 inches of space across in this uh, Sportage's cargo area. So very impressive. Dropping down below that, we have a spare tire. We also have a 12 volt outlet and some LED lighting as well. All right, guys, so we're behind the wheel of the 2024 Kia Sportage. And in this test drive, we're going to talk about a lot of different things, as you can see on the screen right now, including getting our sound level reading so you can know how quiet it's going to be for your family. But first, let's go ahead and start with a hard acceleration. us going up to 60 miles per hour. Now, like we mentioned um, at the spec dump, this is the uh, traditional um, four-cylinder option in the lineup. It does have 187 horsepower, 178 pound-feet of torque. Um, so those are you know, pretty typical numbers, maybe just a little behind a few yeah. of the rivals at this point. Um, a lot of the rivals are pushing around 190 horsepower. The Toyota RAV4 is probably the most of the bunch. I think it's a little over 200 horsepower for its standard setup. So it's a little bit lacking behind the competition. Of course, it's going to be the same motor that you get in the base version of the Tucson as well. Um, so it's not bad. It's just not going to knock your socks off, that's for sure. Right, and, and basically nothing in this segment is going to do that until you get up to some you know, higher performance options, which in this case, the hybrid and plug-in hybrid yeah. variants are going to be your more powerful options. So in addition to the better fuel economy, you will get more power by choosing those models. So as far as the other elements of the powertrain, we do have an eight-speed automatic transmission, nice and smooth transmission. Um, you know, really nothing to complain about here. It, when you put your foot down, it does downshift, give you uh, your power as soon as you need it. Yeah, and as far as your drive trains, you are gonna have front wheel drive uh, as the standard option. You do also have all wheel drive, which is what we've opted for on today's model. And as far as the fuel economy is concerned, I will just go ahead and talk about that because there is only two for the gas model. Uh, it's 28 miles a gallon combined if you choose front drive or 25 miles a gallon combined if you choose the all wheel drive, um, which is not exceptional fuel economy, especially for something with this amount of power. The uh, main competition is going to be about 3 to 4 mpg better combined for just the traditional gas models. Um, but do keep in mind you have the hybrid and plug-in hybrid options. So if maximum fuel economy is something that you're really looking for in your next family vehicle, I would recommend definitely getting the hybrid because not only do you get the more power, as Drew mentioned earlier, you also get quite a bit better fuel economy. I believe it's about 10 mpg or more than uh, this gas model. Right, and we uh, tested out the Sportage Hybrid uh, in the 2023 model year extensively for seven full days. And we've got that review on our channel if you wanna check that out to kind of you know reflects on the differences between the models. Now I do want to take a second here to talk about your ride quality because this is a family SUV first and foremost. So of course you want really good ride quality and we've been nothing but impressed with what this Sportage has to offer. Even though we have 
uh, the largest 19 inch wheel option for this X line, it still takes a bump really, really good. Um, especially if you're cruising on a smooth road like this, it is very quiet inside the cabin and just super comfortable. I do believe that these seats front and back are very comfortable. So the family is definitely going to enjoy that. Now, of course, talking a little bit about our handling characteristics, we have a little bit of a, a corner. This is not the focus of any vehicle in this segment, but we do have pretty nice balance, not a lot of body roll, and I think the steering is nice and responsive. It has just a little bit of heft, not too light, not too heavy. Drew, what's our slam dunk today? Well, the slam dunk is definitely going to be the value. You've heard us describe it all throughout the video. Even though this is a middle trim level, the X-Line, it's really packed with just a ton of features. You might be mistaken and think that this is a fully loaded model just by the way it looks and some of the premium features that you're gonna find. Yeah, and as far as our air ball is concerned, um, it is a little bit of a nitpick, but no wireless CarPlay, no wireless Android Auto. That is something that certainly a lot of buyers are going to be looking for. It's not offered on here. You do have a really nice large display. It's just not going to be a feature that they have. And Toyota RAV4 now has that, as well as a lot of the versions of the new CRV. So uh, definitely a lot of the competition will be throwing that in at this price point. And speeding up here to 55 miles per hour. Wow, that is very impressive sound level reading. We are sitting at 54 decibels even. Um, so that is very, very good sound level reading. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and go on my phone and go to carconfections.com because we have tested out pretty much everything in this entire segment. And we posted all of those sound level readings on our website for you to compare uh, this Sportage to other models. Yeah, there are over 20 entries in this segment. So you've got a lot of different choices and there are definitely some very you know, profound differences in terms of sound insulation from different models in this segment. And that places this model as number three on in the entire segment. Out of like what Drew said, 20 semi offerings, it's number three in the entire segment as to how quiet this is. So very impressive job here. And lastly, Kia's signature warranty applies here. Five years, 60,000 miles for your basic, 10 year, 100,000 miles for powertrain. Uh, do be aware they do not do complimentary maintenance unlike Hyundai though. And let's talk pricing for the 2024 Sportage. I said it has a lot of value, and indeed it does. And for 2024, we still do have that value, although prices have risen. On the base trim level, it rises about $2,000 this year, and on most of the other trim levels, it's about $1,000 for 2024. Now, this X-Line is starting at $31,890. Uh, we do have the premium package as well as a few other accessories. We're looking at $35,285 as our official price when we add in the 1325 destination charge. And um, as you go through the trim structure, you have a base price of 27 grand for the LX this year and 37,000 is your highest starting point. And guys, that's where we're gonna leave off on this in-depth review of the 2024 Kia Sportage X-Line. If you enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful, the 2024 changes that we pointed out to you, we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. By subscribing, you're joining our Car Confections family. We have a ton of automotive content that comes up almost every single day that you will not want to miss out on. We also like to have some fun on this channel as well, so I promise you won't want to miss out on that. If you're already a part of our family, thank you so much for your continued support because you do make this all possible. We also have an Instagram and TikTok page that we'd love for you to check out, as well as our all-new website, which we talked about throughout the video that has very useful functions on it. Anyway, we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.